Hello and welcome to Books of Blood. My name is John and today I've got another tag video for you. This one is the how do you read a book tag and I was tagged by Bookstreet 9 Tribute and I will leave a link to her channel down in the description. Now let me rephrase that when I say it's the how do you read a book tag I don't mean it's how do you read a book tag which is what I'm doing now as a tag video. Uh, no it is how do you read a book. How, what approach do you take to reading okay just to clear that up of course probably everybody knows what I'm talking about anyway without me having to do that so there are four questions uh, so let's go ahead and get underway uh, first one how do you go into reading a book uh, that means uh, do I when I go into reading a book do I look at spoilers do I look at reviews uh, for the most part on that no I don't uh, especially spoilers I hate spoilers uh, that's why I um, uh, my wife and I, to give you a good example of that, uh, my wife and I, we don't have cable TV. All right, so we pretty much, if we watch Netflix or anything, we've got to wait for whatever we, we want to see to come onto Netflix or any of the, the streaming services. And with that being said, uh, when season eight of Game of Thrones came out, we had to wait. And of course, everybody else had already seen it. So I had to stay away from any kind of articles about it. I had to avoid spoilers because I didn't want the show spoiled for me. Okay, so yeah, I don't go into spoilers. That's for sure. Uh, or I don't do spoilers. That's for sure. Uh, as far as reviews, uh, sometimes I will look at a review for a book. But for the most part, again, I, some, that's something I avoid. I would rather read the book and then see the reviews because then I can form my own opinion of the book and another thing is that nowadays you got people that can go into these um, uh, review things like Rotten Tomatoes uh, or uh, Goodreads and they can say they read the book and they might not have read it they could give it oh maybe I don't know maybe they don't like some agenda the author stands for or they don't like something in the book that somebody told them about or I don't know what but they give it a low review for that reason without ever having read it. And I know it's happened, you know. Uh, I don't know if it's actually happened on Goodreads, but I know it's happened on things like IMDb, the movie database thing, and Rotten Tom Tomatoes. Uh, so, yeah, um, that's why I don't really, uh, unless it's something I know I can trust, I don't really pay attention to reviews. Okay, so that's how I go into reading a book. Uh, number two, do you take a book at its face value uh, yes, I do. If you're saying, what they're saying about that basically is, do you judge a book by its cover? Yes, I do. Because actually, truthfully, sometimes the cover of a book can tell you everything about the book. And then other times the cover of a book doesn't really tell you much at all. Okay? I'll give you two examples. And I got them right here. First of all, an example of one that tells you everything you need to know about a book. And I just got it today, and it is Wolf Moon. As by David Irons. And you got up here, you got in space, there's always a full moon. You got the guy in the astronaut suit and you got the reflection of this hideous beast coming toward him. You know? And so, that being said, it tells you everything right there about the book. It's a werewolves in outer space book. That's why I picked it. Because of the cover. Because of, you know, the cover tells me everything. All right? So, now let's move on to one that tells you literally nothing about the book. But right now I'm in the, about the, I'm about uh, 100 pages in and I'm loving it. Alright? And that is in the hills above the grist mill. Okay? Now, if you look, you can see this is like a camera lens. And you see the girl walking into the woods. But, what's in the woods? Okay? And it's actually a Bigfoot or Monster in the Woods book. Alright? But the cover doesn't necessarily tell you that. Now, if you take a book like Eric S. Brown's Bigfoot Wars, and you see the big, ugly Bigfoot on the cover of it, you know that's a Bigfoot book. So, yes, I do judge a book by its cover sometimes. Not always, but it helps. Okay, number three. Do you read a book as the author intended? I'm trying to figure out what that question means. I mean, do I read a book as the author intended? I, I, don't, I don't really get that question. You know, I mean, do I, 
I mean, do I start at the beginning? Yes. Do I flip to the very end to see the ending of it? Absolutely not. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm talking too much. Uh, anyway, uh, so I'm really not sure about that question. Do I read a book as the author intended? Uh, maybe they're talking about if it's a series. Do I read the first book in the series? Of course I do. Unless I don't realize it's the first book in a series like I did with James Herbert's uh, his uh, Ash Trilogy. Which that one I should have read Haunted first, The Ghost of Sleeth second, and Ash third. Uh, I've not read Ash, but I read The Ghost of Sleeth first. And I'm reading it and I'm thinking, this seems like there should be something before it. Sure enough, there was. I have since remedied that. So if they're talking about that, yes, I do read a book as the author intended, unless I don't realize it's a series. So, yeah, answer's yes, if that's what they mean. All right. Number four, final question. I can't believe this is the shortest tag I've ever done, and I'm trying to make it into the longest one I could ever video I could ever do. I'm, I'm kidding about that. I'm not doing that. As a reader or reviewer, do you read a book differently if you are going to review it? Okay, that's the first part of the question. All right, so I'll answer the first part first. Uh, I used to. I used to go into it. If I was going to read a book, I knew I was going to review it. I would... Literally, it would be, it, I would definitely go into it differently. I would uh, almost be like, I'm going to put on my critic's cap, and I'll open the book, and I'm just going to see if I can find any way that I can to praise this book or tear this book down. I used to do the same thing with movies, okay? Uh, for example, okay, let's say I got a movie like uh, Sorority Babes in the Slime Ball bowl rama all right, the title of that should tell you everything about it. It is a B-movie exploitation movie. It is one where you shut off your brain, you sit down, and you enjoy the movie. Have a beer, have some popcorn, have some Pepsi, just enjoy the movie, okay? That's the best way to do it. Okay, but then let's say you take a... a let's see, a, let me find one here. Here we go, we'll do this one. The Vanishing. You know... Fairly important horror movie, you know, and actually an excellent horror movie. It's creepy as hell. Very slow burn of a movie. Something like that that's a little more serious than Sorority Babes and the Slime Bowl of Bolarama. I used to sit down and I just would get into this thought process of like, I'm watching a very important film. I must think on this very hard. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I don't do that anymore. I just sit down, no matter what the movie is, I sit down, I watch it, I enjoy it, and then I think back on what I just watched, and did I enjoy it, did I not enjoy it. So the same thing goes with books, I do the same thing. It's no matter what the subject matter is, no matter who wrote it, no matter what the font is, no matter anything, it's just a book. Enjoy it, or don't, but you don't have to go into a different approach about it. Okay, there we go. All right, second part of the question. Do you venture into other genres to review? Uh, no, I don't. I read horror. I almost exclusively read horror, with the exception. I do occasionally read uh, biographies, especially rock biographies like Hart, Neil Young, Bruce Springsteen, so on and so forth. Uh, but as far as uh, other genres to review, no, I review horror. Okay, um, if you look, another example, if you look, and this is something that my ex-wife and I got into a big argument about, and we had gone to see the movie, uh, Godzilla. Now, I'm talking about the one from 1998 that was directed by Roland Emmerich, where Godzilla looked like a freaking giant iguana, which is exactly what he was, okay? And at the time, I loved the movie, Okay? Looking back on it, I absolutely despise it because it's just not Godzilla. Okay, anyway, my ex-wife hated it. And she compared it to a movie like The Remains of the Day or Howard's End. I said, you can't compare those. It's like comparing apples and oranges. Now, you could compare Howard's End to a movie like The Remains of the Day because they're the same genre. They're the same style of movie. 
is one better than the other. You can compare that way. But with Godzilla and those two movies, you can't do that. You can't make that comparison. And if you ever notice, if you look at these review books where you know different genres of films are reviewed, and you look at who the reviewers are, usually you got one guy doing reviews for sci-fi, you got one guy doing reviews for horror, one guy doing reviews for action, one for drama, and so forth. So yeah, I, that's why I don't go into... Uh, different genres because I'm comfortable in the horror genre. I think I have a pretty good knowledge of the horror genre. That's why I enjoy reviewing it and why I re enjoy reading it. So there's my answer. And that's it. That is the last question for the how do you read a book tag. I'm not going to tag anybody. If you like this tag, then by all means, please do it because I had a lot of fun with it. And I hope you did too. Listen to my answers. Uh, until next time, thank you and have a great night. Great evening. Great evening. Have a great evening. That sounds better. Bye-bye.